All right, now of course we are continuing on in our series. Last week we started, we're doing the Ten Commandments. We're going to preach through all of them uh, that I haven't already dedicated an entire sermon to already within like the past year. And last Sunday morning we started off doing the first commandment. I was going to try to get to one and two, but we just kind of ran out of time. It was getting kind of long, so I decided to just split them up. And um, this morning we'll be covering idolatry, which is Really, I mean, the first and the second commandment we saw, they go, they, they're tied together pretty closely. Not having any other gods before God and then not making any images and um, bowing down and worshiping those images are, are, are really close together. But um, as I was kind of saying in my prayer, you know, I, I, wanna, I don't normally make disclaimers because I don't like to, I don't apologize for the preaching. I don't apologize for the Bible. However, there are certain things that get preached I do feel it's important to just kind of start off so that we, we go into this with the right attitude. There's certain types of subjects like lying, for example, maybe that everyone is just willing to accept. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. Even if you're doing it, it's kind of like, yeah, I can accept that. Okay, you know, I've done wrong. I, sh I shouldn't do that anymore. But there's other subjects that we have more of a tendency to say, I'm not doing anything wrong. Oh, that's not wrong. What, what I have, this isn't wrong because there's, there's certain things that we, we just like to cling to. And sometimes there's things that maybe it's never been exposed to. Maybe it's not as common knowledge as like lying is. Maybe it's something that, that you know, you haven't ever really thought that close about. But then once you kind of become aware of some things, we oftentimes have a tendency to, to, to be, have the wrong attitude and just kind of push away. So keep that in mind this morning. And, and when you hear, when we read the scripture, when I'm trying to make applications that are going to be pertinent for present day, you know, keep that in mind. Um, I'm not saying I'm always 100% of the time right on absolutely everything, but, you know, judge for yourselves. I'm going to be presenting a lot of things because when we're talking about idolatry this morning, I believe there's a lot more idolatry going on in the world today than people like to, to realize or even understand or think about. Um, we have a tendency to think that idolatry is something of the past, that idolatry is something that, oh, you know, these people in like Egypt, you know, they built these statues. And, and of course, look, this is idolatry, right? That, that absolutely is. But just because you don't have some statue in your living room that you bow down to and, and think that that's God, right, doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have other forms of idolatry that, that you're guilty of as well. So we're going to kind of try to go through everything. We're going to cover the, that, the real obvious idolatry, but then some others that, that we might have in our own lives that isn't quite as obvious. Okay, so just, just, just hear it out. Try to keep an open mind. Try to keep your heart humble so that, you know, the whole point, and, and you know, sometimes a preaching can be a little bit hard, but the whole point is that, hey, if we're in error, if we're doing something wrong, we, wa we want to correct that, right? I mean, everyone here, I would, I would think, loves God and you want to make God happy. You want to be, you want to be pleasing in God's sight. So the whole point is to just, let's get right with God. And, you know, no one's here picking on you or, or oh, man, you know, Pastor Burzins, he just has it out for me or anything like that. Because it's not like that. Okay, this is, this is all for our own benefit. And oftentimes, I've said this in the past, I'll say it again, people will think that, like, I know something about them or I've seen something. And it's not even necessarily the case at all. It just, you know, maybe the Holy Spirit's working when I preach on things. I've had people come up and be like, this is exact, you know, like I was just talking about this last night or, or I just bought this thing or what, whatever it may be. And it's like, I don't know that, you know, I'm just, I'm just preaching the Bible. And if it happens to apply to you, then fine, you know, but, but let's, you know, let's just make sure we're in the proper spirit. This morning. I just, I just want to start off saying that um, because there are, there may be, there may, there may be, there's not, hopefully there's not anything in here that you're like, is, is a problem for you and that we all have this under control, that would be great. But either way, we need to hear about this because it's in God's Word. It's one of the Ten Commandments, and we're going to cover it. So um, that all being said, you know, we started off in Colossians chapter 3 because we're already going to start off. We're going we're to 
get into the, the more literal sense of the, of the commandment in a little bit. But in verse number 5, look at what we read um, in Colossians 3. The Bible says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So right here, we can see right off the bat, the Bible is defining covetousness as a, a form of idolatry. This is idolatry. When you are covetous towards things that you don't have, and when you're not content with the blessings that God has given you in your life, and you're focused on these other things, you're not focused on the heavenly things, you're not focused on the things God wants you to be, you are putting something else in between you and God. You're putting something else in that place. And the Bible says that covetousness is idolatry. And this is going to be the main theme. This idolatry that we're talking about this morning, you know, it's one thing to have another God before God, where you say, like, I worship Allah. And just you have a completely separate God. That was last week's sermon. This week, though, you can have idolatry and still think you're worshiping and still be worshiping the same God. You can still have like, well, we worship the Lord. And this is exactly what the children of Israel did. If you remember, when Moses went up into the mountain, when he was receiving the Ten Commandments from the Lord, they made themselves that molten calf. They had Aaron. They're like, Aaron, you know, we don't know what happened to this Moses. Make, a, make us our gods. You know, give us our gods to follow. And he made them the golden calf. But they said they still had a feast unto the Lord. It's not like they changed God's name, but they created this object. They objectified God and said, this is God, this physical, tangible piece of metal that we just created with our own hands is God. And that is idolatry. Now, they didn't have some other false god. There was still the Lord, but, but that was, and this is what we're dealing with this morning. Okay, so... We're all Christians. We all serve the same God. We all love and believe in the same God. But we still need to watch out for idolatry in our lives. And the number one thing, the first thing that we're covering here is the covetousness. Because the Bible defines covetousness as idolatry. And we live in a covetous society. We live in a society that tells you, you need this, you need that, you need to be focused on these things. And just a few verses earlier, it says in um, verse number 2, it says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. This always needs to be our focal point. This always needs to be our drive. We're thinking about the Lord. We're thinking about God. We're thinking about serving Him. We're not so worried about and, and always thinking about the things on this earth. Because the more we get focused on the earthly things, then the more we're going to be sucked into the covetousness, the uncleanness, and, and all these other sins that he's mentioning in this chapter. And he's saying, we need to, you know, you're born again. You have a new spirit. You need to be focused on heavenly things, not on earthly things. And another thing I think is kind of interesting here, and this is a little bit of a side note. I mentioned last week, you know, the, the Catholic Church, they combine the first two commandments and say that's the first commandment, and then they split up covetousness later. But um, based on their way of thinking, they could really combine one, two, and ten because the Bible says here that idolatry is, or covetousness is idolatry. So then you could have the idolatry in one, the idolatry in two, and then covetousness would be um, one, two, and ten. But that, I'm just saying that's kind of the reasoning that they use. They could merge three of them together and just have one, and then they have eight commandments. But um, the reason why they, they don't like to, to split up one and two into two separate commandments is because of what I was just explaining, that they don't claim to have a different God. They claim the God of the Bible. That's what the Catholic Church, you know, that they'll claim that all day long. And they have a lot of doctrines that are correct. I mean, they believe that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. They believe he was born a virgin. They believe he never sinned. You know, there's a lot of things that, that line up with the truth that they believe. But the reason why they don't like them split apart is because one is don't have any other gods. Well, they're fine with that. So when they combine that with two, they just say, well, yeah, we don't have any other gods. But two is not to make unto yourself any image and not to worship them. But what, what do you see when you go into the Catholic Church? You see images. You see images of things on earth. You see images of things in heaven. You see these images of men. You see images of, of you know, all kinds of images. I don't know. I see a lot of um, you know, Mary, of course, and, and just other saints and things like that. And what do they do? 
they bow down. And they say, well, we're not worshiping them. But they're bowing down and they'll, they'll be praying or whatever. And they're getting on their knees. And, for, you know, I mean, if it looks like a duck and it acts like a duck, guess what? It's a duck. I mean, that's, that's not, you could try to call it something else. But that's still idolatry and still very relevant even today. And, you know, they, don't, they just don't want that exposed so much. So they combine commandments one and two. But we, we live in a world today that, that revolves around covetousness and idolatry. Think about this. I mean, we, it, it's become so brazen that there are, and I know this is kind of an older TV show. I don't even know if it's still around. But think of American Idol. Right? People, it, it's, it's part of the name of a TV show. People are putting up, you know, people get up on stage as an idol. And you think about the idolatry, especially that's in the music industry. Now, I absolutely love music. I love music. I have always loved music. And it's, it's something that just touches my soul. Now, my wife isn't quite the same way. She doesn't understand it the same way I do. But music has always had a very, very, very big influence on my life. Now, I am against all of the worldly music that is out there today. It's wicked. It's of the devil. I have entire sermons preached about it because it is deceptive. It is of, the, of Satan trying to, to influence your thinking. It's, it causes, I mean, think about all of the rebellion that happened even in the, early, in, the, in the 60s and 70s with the booming of the rock and roll and with everything else that happened. It's pure rebellion. I'm not going to get off on this whole subject of, of, of worldly music because that is an entire sermon of itself. But I think about this as far as idolatry goes. People have posters, and I had the same thing. I'll tell you exactly. There's a, posters of rock groups, of, of people up on their walls, thinking about them, going, you know, spending tons of money just to go, just for a chance to go and see these people. And they're elevated up on the stage. And they've got this whole crowd under control. And everyone's, oh, yeah, this is so great. Hands up in the air, right? I mean, lighters, and, and tell me that's not a worship service. Tell me that's not a form of a worship when you've got a one man or a few people up on the stage and everyone else is just crowding around around them and just looking at them like they're some kind of God. And literally, these people, they have a type of a God complex too where, I mean, they get to the point with this, this amount of fame because people lift them up and elevate them so high as if they're something special. It's, it's ridiculous to me that, it, that we live in such a society that, that is full of this, this idolatry. Now, I've never fully understood this, and, and, and this is a way where, you know, when we're talking about lifting people up and, and elevating them in status, we were talking about this last week, but it's, it's, always been, it's always been odd with me. It's never sat right. The concept of getting an autograph from somebody. And it's always, it's always been kind of odd for me because it's something that as you grow up, you just do. I mean, you know, I remember being a kid and go to a baseball game or something like that. Like, oh yeah, go get his autograph. Because you're like told to go do these things. And I, I don't even know who, I have somebody's autograph. I think someone from... The Bay, I grew up in Chicago, so like someone from the, the 1985 championship, Bears team, you know, they were doing some basketball thing in my school and I've got one of their autographs or something. And even as a kid though, I was like, you know, everyone's like, oh, get their autograph, get their autograph. And I'm thinking like, what, what do I want to do with this? It's like a person signed their name, there's ink on a paper, like what is this doing for me at all? And, and, and I just, I, to this day, I don't quite get it. But, I, but the reason I think is this, is just because people have been elevated so much that we want to feel special that we have an opportunity to talk to someone who's famous. We want, you know, I, I met so-and-so. I met the president. I met, you know, whatever, what, whoever it is that's lifted up. I mean, you could insert a rock star. You could insert a movie star. You could, Anybody that has fame and be like, well, I met this. See, look, and this proves it. This, this piece of paper, that's their autograph. This proves that I met that person. That's what that does. Now, what's the point of that? And let's be honest with ourselves. What's the point? Of that? Is, it, is it a little bit of pride to say I've met this person and I could prove it to you? And... You know, I, I, this may not be easy to swallow, but that, that's what I believe it is because I can't think of anything else. The only other thing I could think of 
is to work, feed off of other people's pride and other people's sense of, of lifting people and exalting people up way more than they ever should be and getting autographs just to sell them because other people value that so much. I mean, that's the only other purpose because right? people do do that. They, they, they go and troll these events and just try to get as many autographs as they can so they could turn around and sell them because there are people that, that place so much value and so much stock in these things. And we have to be careful because you don't want to elevate the status of any man above other people. We don't want to be respecter of persons. We don't want to think that, that, oh, this person, and I don't care who it is, that they're just so special that is a form of idolatry. You're lifting someone else up to a status that they don't deserve. We're all sinners. And, and oftentimes the sick part is this, is that the people that get elevated are very ungodly. These are not the people that we ought to be elevating and, and putting up as a role model or putting up as, a, as, as someone to look up to even. I'm not saying it's wrong to just have some kind of a hero, someone that you can, you can look up to and, and, and say... You know, this is someone I can learn from, like a mentor or, or someone that's a good example. That's not idolatry. I mean, Paul even said, you know, follow me as I follow Christ. That's fine. That's not idolatry. But when you get to this point of just, you know, like, oh, I'm never washing my hand again because he, he gave me a handshake. You know, whatever, whatever it may be, that's, that's wrong. That is idolatry, and, it's, and, and, and we ought to just, just make sure that we ground ourselves and say, hey, and, and anyone who's really met someone that is famous, aren't they just a person? Yep. I mean, aren't they just another human being? That's all they are. And we have this tendency just to build things up in our head like there's something special. And it's like, no, they make mistakes. They put on their, their pants every day the same way. I mean, it's like, they're people. But we can't let this, this, this society, this culture, and everything get to our heads so that we're elevating people. I mean, the, the music is crazy. Now, now, music these days, with the idolatry, it's not just you know, the, the whole service and everything. I call it a worship service because that's really what it is with these concerts now. But they've gotten to the point, they're so satanic in their idolatry I don't know if anyone see. I, 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 don't, I don't watch TV anymore. I don't watch the Super. I don't watch anything like that that's on the television. But I see the, the clips because people may, you know, on, on videos, on YouTubes and things like that. I, I still get the news. I still watch certain things. I still keep up with current events. And I've seen how they're, like now the halftime shows, I guess, recently on the Super Bowls have been, I mean, just these total godless people who ate God like these, the homosexuals and, the, and, and I mean, the, these sodomites that, that, are, that are performing at these halftime shows, they literally are having like, the satanic idolatry is, is insane. I mean, they literally have people like wearing the Baphomet masks. I mean, that's, that's the Baphomet, if you're not familiar, it's like the, the goat devil head from like satanic worshiping of, of just worshiping a, you know, an, an image, an animal, things like that. But, but I mean, real like historical idolatry, the, you know, they have all this choreography and people dancing around and they're wearing these types of things. The, was it just this one where the, 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 the whore came out on the great beast? Whoever the whore was, like came out on this golden ox? And like, I saw that image, I was just like, this is revelation, like, like the great whore comes out on the beast. And, and literally, like, this is the imagery that's being put out, and this is what, what our society has, has just devolved into, of just base, satanic idolatry and worship, and this is what's acceptable today, and this is what's being pumped on mainstream television that everybody sits down and watches. And it's literally a satanic uh, service that's going on at the halftime show. And, of course, this is happening when, with a bunch of players that, you know, the NFL players or whatever sports team these days, the, the professional sports, they're all lifted up. And these guys, and, and think about this. I mean, if you have children and, and they have these, you know, they're looking up to these people and they've got these poses, oh, man, you know, this guy's so great. And you find out half the time they're like, you know, getting convicted of like all these drug uses. They're killing people. They shoot people, whatever, you know, like these are not 
role, and they'll even say, like, I'm not a role model. Like, stop lifting me up as a role model because I'm not. I'm just a football player. I'm just a basketball player. Like, I'm not your kid's role model. Yet, this, we're living in a society where people just like to live them up, lift them up and say, you know, look at this person, idolize this person, this is who you want to be. And it's completely wrong and it's false. So we shouldn't be doing that. And you need to, to be very careful. If you're going to have an example for a child, make sure it's a godly example, not someone who has nothing to do with God and doesn't care about God at all. But let's get into a little bit now. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter number 5. We're going to take a look at the, at the commandment specifically because there's actually two aspects to the second commandment that we need to cover. Of course, Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5 are, are, are similar passages. They both contain the Ten Commandments. We're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, fifth book of the Bible. Let's, let's look specifically at this commandment and make these applications today because there's still other, besides lifting people up, besides, you know, the whole autograph thing, whatever, I just kind of need to get that off my chest because I don't really fully understand it anyways. But um, besides just, just those types of maybe forms of idolatry, we need to look at specifically to the letter and see what this is talking about. Look at verse number 8 of Deuteronomy 5. The Bible says, because there's two aspects. Um, well, let's read a little bit earlier. We'll get the whole thing in context. Um, so i in verse number 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Of course, commandment number 1. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now, there's two aspects. First, he says, Thou shalt not make thee any graven image, in verse number 8. And then he says in verse 9, Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them. This is twofold. He's saying don't make him and don't bow down to him. It's not just the bowing down. He's saying don't even make him. And this is a very important point because a lot of people will end up having idolatry that they don't even realize is idolatry because they say, well, I don't bow down to it. You don't have to, ju you don't have to bow down to break this commandment. If you have, I would like, a, for example, a real simple example, if you have like a Buddha in your house, right, a Buddha, I mean, people bow down and worship Buddha as a false god. There's no doubt about that. No one can argue with that. That's a graven image. That is a graven image of a false god. That is idolatry. If you have that, even if you don't bow down, you say like, I don't even believe in Buddha. Like, I just like the statue. I think it's kind of neat. That's wrong. That is an idol. That is an idol that you have in your house. He says not to even make it. If you're not even supposed to make it, do you think you ought to have it displayed in your house? No. But that's an easy example. Because that, that, that's no, no controversy about that, hopefully. Hopefully you don't have a controversy about that. But there's a lot of things. Let's look at what he says not to make. Because he doesn't just say here, don't make a Buddha. Verse number 8 says, Thou shalt not make thee any graven image. So graven is something that's that's you know engraved, it's covered in, in gold or in silver, it says, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. So what's he talking about there? He's talking about animals, right? He's talking about animals, he's talking about animals in, in the heaven, animals in the earth, or animals in the water, basically covering pretty much everything. Um, turn if you would to Deuteronomy chapter four, just one chapter earlier. Because I want to show you this and then make the application in our life. And again, it's not some personal attack on anyone in particular, but this is something that's very common today. And even people have all the best intentions and, and just and love God and want to serve God can unwittingly participate in idolatry um, with, without really fully thinking about it or understanding it because I know... Um, almost everybody that, that is what I'm going to expose to you that, that might have been guilty of this 
would never even dream of wanting to do anything against God or, you know, or having idolatry. But look at what it says in Deuteronomy 4. Look at verse number 15. The Bible says, Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth, and lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Now, we don't need to put some inanimate object, you know, and I love how we put that in verse 20. It says, God has brought you forth out of the iron furnace. And that's where these graven images come from, right? He's just got done talking about these graven images and making these likenesses. Well, a graven image, to, in order for the, 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 the gold or the silver or whatever you overlay it with to be melted, it has to come out of the furnace. It's heated up. And he's saying, no, God's taken you out of the furnace. So don't you um, put anything between you and God. Don't you make any graven images. God has brought you out. You don't need to be bringing out God. He's brought you out. And um, let's see, let's think about how this applies to us today because he says uh, it's a little bit more specific here in Deuteronomy 4 than it is in the Ten Commandments in, in, in chapter 5. Because he's saying, we saw not in the earth, not in the earth, and not, not in the, uh, excuse me, in the heaven, not in the earth, and not in the sea. But he says, not to make a graven image, the likeness, for he says, the likeness of any male or female, like any man. Right? Not to make an image of a man. Now, we live in a society, and, and I'm sure if we were to go down to, like most city capitals or places downtown you'll go to, we'll have graven images of men from the past. Do they not? I mean, and you have a little plaque, and you could read about them, and, and you go to historical places. The question is, is that right? When we see a graven image of a man, that's set up, that, that's embrazened in, in you know, bronze or silver or gold, whatever it may be. Is that right? Should, should we be making ourselves graven images? And they say, well, I don't see what, you know, no one's going over there and bowing down to them. Okay, but he said not to make them. He said we shouldn't be doing that. Now, we don't even always have to completely understand absolutely every little nuance of God's word. We first at least need to be able to say, well, if God says not to do something, I'm just not going to do it. And if he says not to make a graven image of, of, of a man or anything like that. Now, because this is so closely tied together with putting it in their God before God, I do think that there is, there is always a sense of like, um, either whether it's elevating somebody or elevating whatever that is to be like a form of a God. Um, I, I do think that's pertinent for this commandment. But one other thing I want to point out here is that he says not to make the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air. Now, in today's society, when if you were to symbolize or objectify Christianity or Jesus Christ, what are the symbols that come to mind? I could think of two, a bird, like a dove, and a fish, right? Those are the two symbols. Now, you see it all over the place. You see the images of the fish, you see the images of the, of the birds. Should we be making an image of an animal, of a winged fowl, or the likeness of a fish to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Should we be doing that? Should we be displaying it? Is that something that we should be saying? Should we, are we saying, this is my God? Now, I know, and look, 
In your heart, I know you're not saying this is my God. This inanimate object is my God. I know that. But as a, as a believer and, and, and looking at this commandment, should we even be participating? Is that something that we ought to be doing? I don't think we should. I, I think that we should, we should leave. And honestly, I don't even really like all the, the um, symbolism of having a cross up there either and wearing the cross and things like that. I, I, I think that also is getting into idolatry because we're, I mean, they're graven images. You know, it's not just like some painting. This is all about graven images. I mean, things that are carved and things that are molten and, and, and created. And we don't want an image of God's creation to represent the creator of everything. That is idolatry. And, you know, again, this is, it's so common. There's so many people with their hearts in the right places and, they, and they're excited and they love God and they want to show the world that I love God. That is great motivation. That is, your, you know, your heart's in the right place. But at the same time, let's make sure we're doing things the right way. There's other ways that we, could, we can express our, our, our love of God and, and, and want to show people and share with people our faith and, and let them know that we're Christian and, and not be afraid or ashamed of that other than creating an idol and, and, or, or buying an idol or anything like that to be put on display to make that, that type of um, statement. And, and you know if we're going to be honest with ourselves, I think that the scripture is being real clear here. God says, don't make any of these types of images. Just don't do it. And that's the first part. Because the second part then is bowing down to them and worshiping and everything else. But it's a two-part um, a two-part thing. And then, you know, it even goes into the, you, even at Christmas time, you think of the nativity scenes. I mean, you have like these images and these, these, these images of, of Jesus in a manger and things like that. I'm against all of it. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to hold anything back. I'm against that stuff because I think it's idolatry. I don't think we should be making these types of images. Now, the story of Jesus, of course I love Jesus. I love him. I'm going to proclaim it. I think it's great. He's my savior. And I'm not going to hold that back either. I don't, you know, I'm not going to hold that back from the world. But I want to try to stick as close as possible to God's commandments. And if, he, and if God's going to be upset, if God's going to be angry because we're making images of these things, then let's not do it. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 12 because I want to show you, you know, people have a, have a, we have a tendency to be almost like a herd mentality of saying, well, there's so many of these other Christians that are doing this, so it must be okay. And again, we got to be careful of that mindset because just because a whole multitude is doing things doesn't make it right. It doesn't ever make it right. I mean, sometimes you're going to be in the minority. Oftentimes, actually, the, probably 99, the majority of the time, you're going to be in the minority <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're doing things right. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 12, you know, we, can, we might be able to see other Christians doing things that doesn't always make it right. It, it, it's comforting. You could, you, could, you could feel better about doing something when a lot of people are doing it. But still, we have to make sure everything lines up against the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 12, look at verse number 29. The Bible says, When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their God, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. So he's saying, you know, take, he's giving them a warning, saying, don't worry, Abigail, sit up. Don't worry about what the other people did than the way that they worship their gods. He's saying, don't even look at it. Don't think about what they're doing. You don't want to incorporate the way that they worship and serve their God with the way that you're supposed to worship and serve the Lord. You can't say, well, I'm going to Christianize this and bring it into Christianity and say, this is how I'm going to worship God. And it's, yeah, it's how they did it, but I'm going to clean it up a little bit and now we're going to serve God this way. He's saying, don't do that. He says in verse 32, what things soever I command you, so look at my commandments, what I'm telling you, observe to do it. You do these things, don't add to it. He's saying, you're not supposed to add to it. And don't take away from it. You know, if, if I'm telling you to do something, do the whole thing. 
Don't do anything more, don't do anything less. Just, just all I'm telling you to do is to do what I said. That's, that's God, right? God's saying this. He's saying, this is the way I want you to do it. And it really pleases me when you do it the way I said. That's it. It's real. God's real simple in that manner. He doesn't need anything. I mean, even, even David, you know, he wanted to build God a temple. He's like, God, you know, like I'm living in this great house. You've just got this tent. You've got this tabernacle. I want to build you this great temple. David had a great heart and there was nothing sinful about wanting to do that or anything at all. But God's like, you think I need a house? <laughs> He's like, I'm the one who designed this tabernacle. This is, this is what I want. And he said, okay, I appreciate that you want to you wanna do something for me, but it, everything is going to be done my way. And he says, first of all, you're not going to build it because you've shed too much blood. Your son's going to do it. And this is exactly the way it's going to be. So it wasn't even, even when God allowed the temple to be built, it was still under explicit direction of God. And, and, and the way that everything was going to be done. It was done his way, not man's way. And um, we see ourselves getting, getting ourselves into problem, any, uh, problems any time we want to add to God's word. It's like um, Aaron's sons that brought the strange fire before the Lord, God killed them. And you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, I, I want to serve God this way. I want to do that. You know, um, Cain and Abel. Cain brought a, a, a different sacrifice than what God expect, that God, God commanded. He's like, well, this is what I do, so I want to bring the best. Well, that's not what God said. God said to do it a certain way, and that's, that's how we ought to just do it and not, and not um, try to mix in the way other people do it. And even when we look at, at the majority of Christianity, the majority of Christianity isn't saved. Unfortunately, they're not. I mean, a lot of people claim the name of Christ, but it doesn't make them saved because they, most, most of Christianity believes in a works-based salvation. They believe that you have to be a good person. You have to be obedient to the law. You have to do all these other things in order to attain your salvation. Or if, if not, maybe not that, they say, oh, well, it's a free gift. But if you do some bad things, then you're going to lose your salvation. It's just the other, uh, the other way of saying the same thing, that you have to maintain some level of good works in order to be saved and go to heaven. And that's what the majority of Christianity teaches today, the vast majority. And we don't want to be copying or mimicking the way other people worship God, especially if they're not even saved. We just want to go right here. This is how I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to look at this book and I'm going to do what he said. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to take away from it. Now, the second part, we'll cover this real quickly, is um, the second part of the commandment is not to bow down. Now, Interesting study for you guys to do on your own time, but I'm going to go through some of these verses just to help prove it a little bit. The word worship is another word that's commonly used today in, in just in churches. Say so it's our worship service, it's worship. The word worship very often in the Bible is associated with getting on your knees or getting on your face before somebody. That's really what, what worship is referring to in that sense. And I'll give you some examples. You don't have to turn to these if you don't want to. Um, you could go ahead and turn to, to Matthew chapter 4. That'll be the last place we turn to. But like in Joshua 5.14, the Bible says, And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? So we're going to see here the, the, the tying together of falling down on your face and worship. He says, we fell down on his face and did worship. Second Kings 5.18, in this thing the Lord pardoned thy servant, that when my mat, this is Naaman the Syrian when he got healed, and he's, and he's talking to Elisha and he's saying, look, you know, I believe in the Lord, but when I go back, to, my, to, to the king, you know, because he served the king. He's like, when he brings me into the house of that fake God, he's like, don't hold that against me. You know, he's like, and this is what he's asking um, in 2 Kings 5.18. He says, in this thing, the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimmon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimmon, when I bow down myself in the house of Rimmon, the Lord pardon thy servant, in this thing. 
Um, and notice here, he said, when my master goes into the house of Rimmon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow down myself. So when he goes into worship, he's bowing himself down. He's bowing himself down before that God because he's worshiping that God. Psalm 95, 6 says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Uh, Isaiah 46, 6 says, They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith, and he maketh it a God. They fall down, yea, they worship. So the word worship is, is, is tied together with falling down on your knees or falling down on your face in worship to somebody. So it's not just like, we have a tendency to think, you know, worship is like maybe singing songs or singing praises unto God. But biblically, when we look at that, that's not really what it's talking about. I mean, that might be part of a worship, but a worship has a lot more to do with, with, with getting down on your knees and, and doing obeisance unto the, the figure or God or whatever, where you're submitting yourselves and making yourself lower by getting down on your knees in that humble position before the other thing. That is worship. And um, Daniel says, um, if you remember in the book of Daniel, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he says, if you won't fall down and worship this false god, he's like, when the music plays, if you don't fall down and worship, I'm going to throw you in that burning fiery furnace. Same thing. He uses that example. And if you're in Matthew 4, we'll see in verse number 9 that when Jesus was tempted of the devil in the wilderness, Satan was, asked, was saying, well, if you worship me, you know, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth. Look at verse number 9. He says, and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So the two aspects of, of, this, of this second commandment of idolatry is one is just making the images, making them at all, and the other one is bowing down to them and bowing down unto these fake images. Now, I, I was in uh, martial arts a long time ago, um, and I thought this was real strange. And this was before I was saved, but... In the gym where we're meeting, you know, they have all the mats and everything out. At, before we always started our, our training, there was this picture up, a couple pictures up, like a picture of the guy who, who started the, the martial art and was like the grand wizard. I, I don't know what they call him. Whatever, whatever, whatever the guy's title is, you know, he's like the founder. What's that? Sensei. The sen yeah, like a sensei, but I go... The guy who started like kind of the whole thing, right? They had a picture of him up. And what we would do, the whole class would bow down, get on your knees, and bow down right before that picture. That is wrong. Now, you could say, that's just how they do a handshake. No, I mean, you can do... Doing one of these is different than getting down on your knees and putting your head to the ground in front of an image. I'm sorry, those are two different things. That is worship when you do that. You can, you, you can, and people like to call things by a different name and think that all of a sudden it's not. You know, they, they'll say, well, this isn't idolatry because it's just a figure. This isn't, this isn't worshiping. I'm paying respect. Well, part of worshiping is paying respect anyways, but that is worship. You can respect people without worshiping them. But you can't worship people without respecting them. That's the way that works. But, um, so think about that. I mean, look, the, again, the whole goal is, is to try to make sure that we're all doing the best that we can and being as righteous as possible before the Lord. We don't want God to be upset with us. And I have to, look, I'll be honest with you, I have to do this from time to time. Things have a tendency of slipping in. You know, people give gifts and there's stuff that like, I, I have a tendency of just, we have to do every once in a while a sweep of the house and say, what is not pleasing to God in our house right now? What are, what's in here that, that I shouldn't have? What's in here that might be idolatry or that might be something that, that I just shouldn't have? And, you know, for either for my testimony or whatever. I remember in, in a house um, when we lived in Gilbert, I had this, this plastic cup, and it was a beer cup, right? And I don't think, like, like, and it was after, I mean, that was from, like, a long time ago. 
But, you know, after I saw it go in church and everything like that, I don't even think about these things. It, I, I had it on my desk, and I had, like, pens and pencils and things like that. I mean, those types of things, you don't even look at them anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just there. You don't look at it and be like, oh, this is a beer cup. Never thought about it again. We had a younger child over at our house, like a preteen, you know, 12 years old or something, and they said, Brother Dave, what is that? You know, why do you have that? And I'm like, oh, you're like, you're right. I shouldn't have that there. And these are the types of things, whether it be a form of idolatry, whether it be something like that, that's just going to hurt my testimony because people are thinking like, oh, are you endorsing, you know, are you endorsing Miller Lite because you got this, this, this Miller Lite cup here? Are you, you know, are you a, a drinker? Are you a drunk? Like, no. I'm not, and, and I shouldn't put out that type of a, an image either, and I also shouldn't have any of these other images. Now, just because I'm not bowing down and worshiping them, I'm still not going to have the, the graven and the molten images that the Bible says we're not even supposed to make, and I'm not going to make any brazen images of a man. I'm not gonna, you're never going to see a, a, a statue of Pastor Burson's you know, outside of Word of Truth Baptist Church or you know, holding the Bible or something like that. It's not going to happen, Okay. It's not going to happen now. Not that anyone would want to do that anyways, but, <laughs> you know, we're going to follow the Bible and, and, you know, take it for what it's worth. Hopefully, um, you know, God's word has spoken to your heart this morning, but let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your words. Lord, as much as I know everybody here, I know that we all want to serve you. I know that we want to do what's right. We want to be good children. We want to do the things that are pleasing in your sight, God. Help us to, to be able to identify the things that are unpleasing to you. God, help us to have a pure heart and just to, to get rid of whatever might possibly be offensive to you, even if we're a little bit unsure. God, even if there's some things that, that maybe we don't know if they're going if, if to, if it'll, if it'll be upsetting to you or if it goes against what, what you've commanded us to do. God, help us just to, be, to just to be careful and cautious and think, well, what does it really matter anyways if I have this little trinket or this little statue? It doesn't. None of these, these things that, that could be considered idolatry, they don't really matter. And if we don't have them, we're not just, just going to be suffering um, tremendously by not having them in our life, dear Lord. Help us just to be able to, to go through our houses, identify the things that... that aren't pleasing in your sight, God, and help us just to purge ourselves of them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.